We are particularly concerned that the, this debate has been instituted barely a decade since the promotion of the new constitution at uh, Kenya 2010 without an informal basis provided for a thorough reflection and or audit of what, what has worked or not worked. The constitution of Kenya has been celebrated as a robust document and lauded for its very progressive provisions. The challenge of uh, implementation has been that the government culture, mindset, attitudes, and practices are, are yet to align with the spirit and letter of the supreme law. The investment break with the past is yet to be realized. If indeed the arrangement and uh, sincere questions to ask about the efficacy of the const current constitution is the referendum an answer. There are several constitutional reform debates initiatives that have been undertaken since the constitution 2010. In 2014, for example, the Budget and Appropriation Committee formed a working group led by the Auditor General to audit the impact of the implementation of the Constitution on the economy. The working group noted that the increased public spending was not attributed to the constitutional implementation process, but rather to the policy adoptions by both the executive and the legislature. Thus, the Constitution could not be censured at an at an as an expensive venture. Despite this observation, the working group went ahead to recommend a reduction of the number of MPs, MCAs, without compromising the national values and principles, setting the, sa the stage for possible constitutional reforms. In 2016, the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy, CODE, embarked on a quest to amend the Constitution through a popular referendum, which was popularly known as Okoa Kenya. This popular initiative was unsuccessful as it failed to meet the constitutional threshold to support a referendum. Most recently, in March 2018, the political tension that followed the 2017 disputed presidential elections was pacified by a symbolic handshake between the President of Kenya, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, and the NASA leader, Honorable, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga. The handshake was soon led to the establishment of the Building Bridges Initiative, whose consultative efforts are geared towards constitutional <coughs> reforms. In addition to this, we also have the Punguza Mizigo Initiative proposal by the Third Way Alliance leader, uh, Ekuru Aukot. Whereas ICJ Kenya, LSK, and FIDA Kenya fully support a robust debate on the constitutional implementation process, we are apprehensive that the current clamor for constitutional reforms is being undertaken without meaningful involvement of Wanjiko. In our considered view, the constitution has not been given sufficient time to organically shape the political landscape and change cultural, political, and political mentalities, attitudes, and behaviors of the people of Kenya. Instead, this is an agenda by the political class which does not present clearly defined constitutional questions that should trigger a referendum. We therefore posit that the constitutional reform process is not a magic bullet. There are currently many hills that, for this, that this country is suffering from, ranging from corruption, mismanagement of public funds, mm -hmm. and negative ethnicity. We wonder whether a referendum should be a priority for this country at the moment because there is undoubted, undoubtedly no need for universal suffrage to decide on how to curb corruption and inculcate national values and principles in Kenya. We therefore call upon the government and the political class to, one, first undertake an audit of the state of constitutional implementation that is informed by Wanjiku's perspective. Secondly, His Excellency President should forthwith demonstrate goodwill by ensuring that the executive and legislature unlocks the impasse in the constitution of the Judicial Service Commission by gazetting the duly elected representative of the Court of Appeal, prioritize reforms in the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission by ensuring that positions that were vacated are filled according to the Constitution. 
Thirdly, his actions of the President should forthwith and public direct all ministries, departments and agencies to forthwith comply with court orders and judicial decisions. And finally, reconsider the approach on constitutional reform debate which must be guided and anchored in the Constitution and full compliance to the rule of law. Uh, for those of you who may have a question or two, uh, we'll entertain at least three or four. You raised the question as to whether the question of the constitutional change, uh, we are rubbishing it or it is too early, it is not uh, implementable or we are opposed to it. Uh, you see, if you look from the communique that we have made, uh, we have not stated at any point that uh, we do not want the constitutional changes. What we are saying is that there is a law th that provides for these processes and how it's supposed to be done and the implementation of this process. And uh, we don't want a situation where there will be a euphoria, where the public is geared to a particular conclusion without them being told what is required to be done. Right now, the public is being told, referendum, referendum. I'm supporting referendum, I'm opposing referendum. Referendum for what? Have you been told that the particular provision of the constitution is not, is not proper? Which provision of the constitution have you been told is not workable so that you can now tell the public, now we want to amend this particular provision? What we are saying as, a, as a lawyers, as a jurist, as persons in the, in the legal profession, we are telling whoever is taking the initiative, come up clearly, tell us these provisions are what we want to place before the people for purposes of implementation, purposes of the referendum. So there must be a specific question. So we are not going to tell anybody that uh, the clamor for constitutional change is too soon, too late, or otherwise. We have said these provisions need a particular framework. This framework must be followed. It should not be taken that uh, we talk about the vehicle without knowing which path it's going to follow. Or the passengers, or the passengers in, that, in that particular process. So the vehicle must follow a particular path with specific passengers. And the ones we are saying here, Wanjiku must be involved, the question must be set out, and it must follow the provisions of the constitution in pursuing the amendment. And that's what we are saying. As lawyers, we want the process to be guided by the constitution. If whichever process is chosen, it must be truthful. It must focus the people themselves. And one of the th issues that we have identified, uh, which uh, has not been implemented, is when you look at the fifth schedule of the Constitution that uh, set out timelines of various uh, legislations that are supposed to have been put in place. Now, the one that worries us is, of course, the issue of the Judiciary Fund. The Judiciary, being one arm of the government, is grossly underfunded. Today, in fact, as I was going through uh, my social media uh, platforms, the common complaint is that there is no access to justice to the ordinary Wananchi in this sense. You want to have a matter concluded in the employment court or in the lands division. You get a mention date in July next year to take a hearing date in 2020. We don't even have the diaries yet for 2020. What's the problem here? The problem is not just the judiciary. The problem is that the lack of capacity. You can't have 12 judges dealing with employment matters covering 45 million Kenyans. It's impossible. We can't talk about um, reducing the backlog of cases if the judiciary is not properly funded. Yet, what is to stop, for example, the judiciary fund from being implemented and say that even 2% of the national budget, for example, would go towards the, 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 the judiciary fund? Another percentage goes towards the legislature. Another percentage goes to, towards the executive. Now, these are simple things that don't even require constitutional amendments. It just requires goodwill and a proper resource demarcation. That's what we want to delimate. And one of the things that we want to insist um, in the first quarter is we're going to have, come as a three institutions. We now start going to start, we will commence lobbying to ensure that the three arms of government are properly funded. We can't talk about a change in the constitution when we have a constitution, as my colleagues have rightly pointed out, that has not been fully tested. Incidentally, this constitution is a wonderful document. If it's properly implemented in terms of chapter six, we would not even be dealing with these issues of corruption. If we're talking about devolution, why are we hear hearing of excess expenditure instead of going towards development? So those are the areas that we now are going to focus on 
and it is our sole aim now to assist in the reform agenda for the posterity and for the benefit of all Kenyans as a whole. And that is why we have come together as professionals, as lawyers, to provide guidance and direction in this debate going forward. And you'll hear much more of this in the coming months so that we do not want to have a situation which is hijacked without a proper understanding and analysis of what the true problem is. Any other questions, please?